lot better. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 3. We're going to read verses 10 through 14 tonight. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 through 14 tonight. Let's all stand as we read the word of God. <clears throat> if you have it, give me a good strong amen. amen. Scripture says in verse 10, Paul says, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. But out of them all the Lord delivered me. Don't ever forget that little line right there. Yea, and all that will live godly, here's a, here's, a, here's a sobering thought, yea, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue, thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Two words jump out at me. So I was reading this scripture one day. That's in verse 14 where Paul says, but continue. But continue. He says, despite all these other things, but continue. That's what he's saying. Tonight, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not fixing anything. I'm just reminding us of who we are and why we do what we do. That's all I'm doing tonight. I, I don't plan on being, I, I don't can say that. We're, I, I plan on being real long tonight, and um, I don't plan on it. I just, I just want to remind us a little few things tonight that would help us, Father. I want to be a help to our church, and I'm certainly grateful tonight for these who are here, grateful for the visitors who are in attendance. Most of all, I'm grateful for the Word of God. That book, that will never, that will never grow out of date, always is relevant, always is powerful. God, allow me to preach from it tonight what you want me to say to thy people, please. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. There are certain foods I like, but if you change the recipe, I don't like it. I like McDonald's French fries. Somebody, it, now you can say amen to that one right there. That's worthy of saying amen. You say, preacher, it's unhealthy, yes, but I will die happy eating McDonald's French fries. I love McDonald's French fries. I, I just, I think they're the best French fries out there. Everybody always says, well, you ought to try this place. They're good. No, it's not. I, I, I don't go to McDonald's for the hamburger. I don't go to McDonald's for anything else. I go there. I could get me a large French fry and I'm happy. Amen. Just putting that grease in your mouth makes me happy. I love McDonald's french fries. Don't change the recipe. One year, they several years back, they decided to change the recipe. They ruined the french fry. Them and Burger King thought that they, could, they wanted to be healthy. We don't go to McDonald's and we don't go to Burger King to be healthy. Somebody say amen right now. We go there to get nice, good, unhealthy food because we enjoy the unhealthy food. Somebody say amen. Fried is good. Don't give me this little baked stuff. Fried is good. First time you all woke up in church. I, lo I love chocolate chip cookies. Um, I, I don't want them where, you all know, I, wa I don't want them where they're a weapon. Where you wait till the, you cook the thing and it's hot and it comes out and it's got to get a jackhammer just to break it up. You can throw it at your sister and knock her out. I, I, I don't want that type of chocolate chip cookie. I want the type of chocolate chip cookie that's not, it, you, don't, you don't cook it all the way. Somebody with me so far? You pull that thing out of the oven and that thing, you, you, almost, you don't eat it. You just kind of absorb it. Somebody help me out. It's just right, and it just kind of melts. It's just a mess to eat because it's just soft. And man, you can, you can bite down. Now, don't mess. Don't mess with the recipe. 
the recipe is what makes the chocolate chip cookie. People come to me and say, well, you need, to, you need to change this so it's a little bit more healthy. I don't eat chocolate chip cookies to be healthy. I don't want healthy chocolate chip cookies. Somebody help me out just a little bit. I like chocolate chip cookies because I, I think when we get to heaven, I think there's going to be manna in heaven called chocolate chip cookies. You say, where's that in the Bible? It's going to be somewhere in there. I haven't found it yet, but I'll show it to you when I find it. I love chocolate chip cookies. Now, now you change that recipe. I think I don't have the recipe in front of me tonight, but I think inside of that, inside of that recipe, I'm just kind of going off the top of my head. Help me out. Um, just nod your head like this or no like this. I know what I'm doing here now. Um, there, I know there's flour in it. Am I right? Yeah, there's flour in that stuff, and there's water in there. Am I right? No water? Okay, no water in there. And um, I do know there's milk in there. There's some milk in there. And there's some um, sugar in there. Am I correct like that? And I think there's some baking soda or powder? Soda. Soda? Baking, baking soda. Would you be quiet? I'm looking at my wife. She's a whole lot prettier to look at than you are. But anyway, and uh, but... But, but baking soda. And then I think there's, um, man, I know I'm missing a lot of stuff right now. I know there's chocolate chips. Forget everything else. Don't, don't, you don't, now you don't follow the recipe they tell you. Where, you know, just what, just, just, just do this little measurement. Throw the whole bag in. I don't eat the chocolate chip cookie to have a one chocolate chip in the thing. I eat it to have chocolate chips. So, would somebody help me out on that right there? Now, let's say one day I'm going to say, well, I don't want any salt in this thing. Well, what's salt going to do? Well, you, you cook it without salt, you'll find out. Because that salt does help that chocolate chip cookies. Now, I'll be honest with you, baking soda, I'm not a big baking soda fan. If it was me, Brother Isaiah, I'd take the baking soda out. Because when I was a kid, baking soda, when you had an upset stomach, Mama said, you need some baking soda water. You said, what does that do? Go home and drink it sometime, and you'll find out what it'll do. But, uh, but I, 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 I get that baking soda. I, I look at that baking soda, and all I can think about, all I can think about is Mama giving me baking soda water, and I know what comes up after that. And, did you get that? But anyway, and uh, but I, I, so if it was me, I would just take the baking soda out. And if you take the baking soda out, it's not going to be the same. If I look at that and say, man, there's th these eggs. You know, I think they have two. Is it two eggs? Uh, and who's saying three? <laughs> Again, my wife is prettier than you. But anyway, how many is in there? Two or three? Three. <coughs> two. My wife says two. I trust her. <laughs> now, let's say I look at those two yellow eyeballs. <laughs> and I say, I don't want. I don't want one of those eyeballs. I just want one. I just put one egg in there. That chocolate chip cookie will not be the same. What makes that cookie so the taste that I like is the ingredients on the inside. Now, what's happened in our day is that there's a lot of people who become cute with the old-time religion and thought we can just change it just a little bit. They think that we can just tweak the old-time religion. And can I tell you tonight, we don't need to tweak the old-time religion. We need to keep on walking the old-time religion. We have churches tonight that look more like a bar scene than they do a church house. And we need a church house and not a bar scene. You see, the truth is tonight, we got, God gave us a book right here on how to have an old-fashioned, independent, fundamental, um, 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 sin-hating Baptist church where we reach people for Jesus Christ. Now, let's not change the recipe. Amen. Let me illustrate. Good. Part of that recipe is the King James Bible. Someone says to me, well, that's hard to read. Well, then get a dictionary. I know this is a novel idea. They, well, you know, that King James, all the these and the thous. Now, you know what thee means, and you know what thou means. So don't give me this thee and thou stuff. You're smart enough to know what it means. It's not, get this now, it's not that you don't understand it. You don't like the conviction that it brings on your life. Now, you take the King James Bible out of this church, and this church changes. 
We come at fact, if I was to come up tonight and I say, ladies and gentlemen, the King James Bible is not the inspired and preserved word of God, you ought to immediately fire me that night. I, I mean that night, fire me that night. If one day I'm gone and I'm in the grave and some guy comes in here and he tries to be smart and intelligent and he shows you how dumb he is and he says, well, the King James Bible, you know, it just contains God's word. No, it doesn't contain it. It is God's word. It's part of our recipe illustration. The simplicity of salvation is part of what makes us. God did not make salvation difficult. God made salvation simple. You say, how simple did he make it? He made it so simple so you could get saved. Come on now. Listen to me. He made it so simple that whether you've got a PhD or a kindergart or you're a kindergartner, everybody in between can get saved. Why? It's the simplicity of the gospel that makes it so powerful. We, we, we live in days where independent Baptists have tried to, they, well, you know, you got to make sure they really mean it. Well, how do I know that? I don't know if they mean it. What do I have to do? Say, stand on your head. Show me that you really mean it. Stand on your head. I, I don't know what really mean it does. I know this. I'm to give the gospel as simple as God gave it to us, and I'm to make it simple so that somebody can get saved. And if I change that simplicity, listen to me, if I change the simplicity of salvation, it then becomes a work salvation, and we've got to keep the gospel simple. Why? Because God made it simple. That's right. This simplicity is what makes it available to all. God says, whosoever. He didn't say, well, this person can get saved and this one can't. I'm glad that God said whosoever. Why? That includes me. I'm glad that God gave us a gospel that's a whosoever gospel and whatever sin someone has done can, listen to me, there is no sin that can keep somebody from getting saved. All they've got to do is put their trust in Jesus Christ and God can save them despite what they've done. (laughs) Our soul winning is part of what makes us. That's right. People say, You're, you pressure us too much for soul winning. You want me to pressure you to be worldly then? Come on now. So I guess there's not a hell. I guess, I, guess th- I guess this thing that we're doing here is just a, we might as well just give it all up because there's not a real hell. If, we're da- if there's a real hell, somebody ought to say, hey, we, we need to be soul winners. We've got to be, so- if there's a real hell, we ought to say somewhere there ought to be people that go out and lead people to, why? There's a real hell. Well, you know, preacher, this stuff of going soul winning in your white shirt and tie. Don't you understand this is 2023? Yeah, I understand that. I still go soul winning in my white shirt and tie. You say, why? It still works. Somebody help me out. I'm not going out to look like one of the boys as I go out soul winning. One thing that sets Maranatha Baptist Church, or Church apart is when we go soul winning dressed up, they know who we are and get this now. And it's amazing. They see us coming. You can pull out a track and they know that's the church right there. That's the church right there. Let me tell you something. I'd rather them know that it's the church than me to try to sneak up on people and try to, and try to sneak the gospel in. No, sir. Hey, when Jesus came, he didn't change what he looked like. He said, let's go like I always am. Amen. That's right. You say you're old school. I've not even started yet. Yeah. Go ahead. Part of what makes us are the hymns we sing. Yeah. I was saw a church recently. They and, I, and I'm not criticizing a church. I'm just doing what we do. They like to have the screens up there with the with the little words up there, and everybody like as if people can't read a, a hymn book. I like the hymn books. He said, "What's wrong with screens? Nothing. If you're going to watch television, but I'm at church. Somebody help me out." Right. Yeah. Now, now I, I determined when we when we got turned this into an auditorium and and we looked at maybe trying we had some screens over there for the for like banners like this and so that's what we have. But when we got here, I thought seventeen thousand dollars for a projector. We don't need to spend seventeen thousand dollars for a projector. Seventeen thousand dollars can keep a lot of people out of hell. 
can run a lot of buses. I said, we're just going to go back to old school. I said, when the missionaries got up and had to, had to prove to us by their passion of the delivery of their field that they really had a burden for their field. You see, we forgot who we are. You see, you take the hymns away. That's why we sing the hymns that we have. I like, um, I like the song Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. I love the songs The Old Rugged Cross. I like the old time hymns um, The Leaning on the Everlasting Arm. There's power in the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I love the old time hymns. Why? There's a power in the old time hymns. And if we take those hymns out of this church, you won't like this church because those hymns is part of the recipe that makes this church. Sunday school is part of what makes this church. Well, let's just cancel Sunday school and have one big service. No, let, let's, let's, let's just have Sunday school. In fact, let's just add some classes to our Sunday school. I was talking to a preacher out west as the large church out west. We were talking, I think it was a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, and we were talking about Sunday school. And he, he said, you know, brother, we were talking about Sunday school. And I told him, I said, I, had, I need to call you. I said, I, you're the only guy with a larger church that I can talk to about Sunday school. He goes, isn't that sad? I go, it is. Yeah. He goes, we're, we're becoming dinosaurs. I said, I know, that's sad. Yeah. You know, Sunday school has worked for years, and yet now we live in days that take the Sunday school out. No wonder people are getting away from the Bible. They Listen to me, they're not taking sports out. They're not canceling sports programs. They're not canceling Hollywood programs, but yet we cancel church in the Bible teaching. I'm saying Sunday school is part of who we are. The bus ministry is part of who we are. The homeless ministry is part of who we are. The preaching of the church is part of who we are. The welcoming of all the people is part of who we are. Getting people involved at every stage of the Christian life, of the Christian growth is part of who we are. Recovering or, re, or restoring the fallen is part of who we are. Standards for leadership is part of who we are. Faithfulness expected is part of who we are. Upbeat songs and the upbeat specials and the choir singing the happy songs and the piano and the welcoming of Israel is part of who we are. I tell my music people, I said, I don't want to have, I don't want to have a song, a song service where we come in and, and it's this high church type of music where you come in and you, you know, you, you feel like you're stiff and you're dead and everybody goes to sleep. I want song service that is upbeat, that prepares you for the preaching. So when the preacher gets up, it's not one thing or another. It all matches each other. You see, all of these, get this now, are part of who we are and part of what makes us successful. Now, if we weren't being successful, I would still do them. You say, why? Right to do. That's right. I don't do them to make me successful. I do them because it's who God expects us to be and what God wants us to be. Now, Paul told Timothy, he says, but continue. But continue. Now, what does that word continue mean? This is what it means. It means to carry on. It means persist. It means press. It means don't give up on what you're doing. Get this now. It means maintain what you're doing. It means don't move to greener pastures. It means don't change the recipe. When he says, but continue, he says, you keep doing it, Timothy. Don't you change what I taught you. You keep doing it day in, day out. There's going to be days you got to press on. There's going to be days you got to pick yourself up to do it. There's going to be days you got to persist at it. There's going to be days that you have to maintain what you're doing. But he says, don't change. He says, that's what made you what you are. He says, but continue. He says, hey, you persist on, carry on what you're doing. Now, what are, we, what are we to continue? He tells us. He says, continue in doctrine. 
circle the word doctrine, put this beside it, what we believe. He says, don't change what you believe. I don't care if the whole world changes what we are. We don't change what we are. You say, why? Doctrine is that book right there. And man, let me tell you something. You say, well, preacher, if we just change the doctrine a little bit, then we can get more people inside this church. If I have to change doctrine a little bit to change, get more people in this church, we'll close the church down. Let me tell you something. It, we've got to stick by the doctrine of God's word and not change it. Why? Because that's part of who we are. It's what God made us to be. Yeah. Amen. Well, but preacher, don't you understand? We need to yoke up with these churches that don't believe in the virgin birth of Christ. No, we don't yoke up with them. We stay away from them. Well, let's yoke up with these churches. You know, they've got good ideas. And let's go to their conferences, these churches that have, that look like rock and roll churches. Let's go there. No, we're not going there. You say, where are you going to go? Going to go to the Bible. That's what, hey, hey, don't change, but continue in what? In doctrine, what we believe. Then he says something else. He says, manner of life. Underline that phrase. Put this right here. The Christian lifestyle. Amen. The Christian lifestyle. Yeah. He's saying Christians live differently from the world. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 That's right. Come on. That's it. Your lifestyle is different. Yeah. You go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. What Christians do? Yes. Right. 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 Don't change your lifestyle. Hey, you keep living the way God tells you to live. You make sure that you don't try to, well, you know, I, I see how the world's doing it. Listen to me, I don't change, I've, I've not changed my hairstyle probably since I was born. <laughs> if you used to go back, look at young pictures, and no, we're not gonna show them, but if you used to look at young pictures when I was a young boy, I parted my hair like this, and I've combed my hair like this since a young boy. She said, well, don't you, they, we've had, we've had hairstyle changes and everything changing and I just keep on combing my hair the same way. You say, why? Because, hey, don't plan on changing what I am. I continue the lifestyle. I don't, okay. You notice in, in teen revival, all my preachers had a certain tie and a suit coat on. Amen. Say, why? I don't want to groom teenagers. That church is play. When it's preaching time, you wear a certain tie and a suit coat. Amen. I was preaching down in Texas a couple weeks ago at a camp. It was hot. Of course, it's always hot in Egypt. I was preaching down in Texas, and it was camp time. And, you know, most of the time you look at guys at camp, and they dress down because it's camp. Well, you know, you don't have to wear a suit and tie. No, not Domley. Domley's down there, white shirt, tie, and suit coat on. Why? Preaching time. It's not about me. It's about him. It's who I represent. He says, he says, doctrine, manner of life, purpose. What's our purpose? Circle that word. Reaching souls. Reaching souls. Listen to me tonight. Somewhere we've got to, we've got to get over this thing. Well, I don't want to reach that, that, that kind of people because you know, no, I don't know. What are we supposed to do? Let the whole world go to hell? Because we got our little phobia about a people over here. Everybody needs to be reached. We, listen, um, Christians in America are going to stand before God with blood on their hand because they won't go after a certain type of person because, well, I just don't want my kids to get around there. Hogwash on that. Amen. Come on. When I, was a son, when I was a young boy, I was going in the middle of gangs witnessing to the gang members. Amen. We've got a bunch of Pharisees walking our hallways saying, I just don't want to reach that type of person. No, sir, reach everybody. Amen. That's why I tell, I tell people about our church. We're not a white church. We're not a black church. We're not a Mexican church. Not an Asian church. We're a church. Yeah. Somebody help me out. I don't care about the color of the wrapping paper of your soul. I want them to get saved. I want them to come to church. I want them to get baptized. I want them to serve the Lord. Why? That's how you reach the world. Yeah. Now, don't change the recipe. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Amen. Take the top, yeah. I was down south 
deep south. Yeah. Had a preacher one time say, yo, you can't bring that type of person in church. I said, why not? They said, well, my people won't accept it. I said, well, why not? Come on now. I've never found one person that God won't accept and save their soul. I've yet to find that person. Now, I'm not trying to stay up with the Joneses of all the fancy churches in America. I'm just trying to stay up with God and say, okay, he came to save sinners. I've not found the sinner yet that he cannot save. Well, maybe Brother Flores, but not everybody else. He says, long suffering, or no, go back, faith. What's that? Attempting the miraculous. So he says, continue doing what you believe. Continue the Christian lifestyle. Continue reaching souls. Then he says, continue faith. What's that? Attempting the miraculous. Now, if Maranatha Baptist Church gets comfortable with this building, listen to me, we'll tear it down, set up a tent, go back to building a church again. Everybody ought to have a passion for God to do the miraculous inside this church. We live in an age where people say, it can't be done. I just believe that God can still do it. Now, I'm saying God says continue. Continue attempting miraculous. Hey, Spanish department, fill up that auditorium. Hey, English department, fill up this auditorium. Hey, Maranatha Baptist Church, let's get some more Sunday school classes started. Hey, keep on attempting the miraculous. He says long-suffering. I wish she wouldn't put that there. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Growing people. Yeah. All right. You ever? I, I got news for you. When you're growing Christians, you got to be long suffering. You know why? They don't grow as fast as you want them to. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Kind of like Brother Diom's hair. It's just slow growth. <laughs> understand? Understand? Get this now. My job: long suffering. Yeah. That's why I, 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 tell, I tell some of you, I, I, you've heard me say this time and time again, stop trying to be the spiritual policeman. Let God do the work inside the heart. With the preaching of the word of God will speak to the heart. Listen, when someone goes around and tries to show their little spiritual badge, I'm telling you what's, what you're going to do. You're going to run people off. Let the Holy Spirit speak to the heart. People will grow. Amen. Amen. That's right. Long suffering. Yeah. Man, I'm glad my parents were long suffering with me. There was times I was a knucklehead. Not a lot. No amens on that now. There was times I was a knucklehead. My parents, though, they were long suffering. You know why? They loved me. Yeah. Right. Now we've got to be loving with those who've been saved. They don't listen. Some people just don't know. So let's be long suffering with them. These teenagers that come, we could run every teenager off if we wanted to. But listen to me, I'm telling you, some of these teenagers have just, they just never have been in church. They don't know how to, and I'm not talking the ones here tonight. I'm talking the ones that come on Sunday morning and they come and they're the first time in church and they think, well, I guess I'm, I can act this way in church like I know you can't act this way in church. And the preacher calls them down. But listen to me, but we got to be long suffering. Why? Because one day it's going to click and one day it's going to take off. Off, and one day their life will change. Now God says, continue in that. He says, continue in charity. Underline the word charity puts this beside it, investing in people. Invest in people. We must never stop investing in people. Charity is not some gooey word. Oh, we, we feel fuzzy on the inside. No, it's hard work investing in the lives of people. It's a bus worker going out on Saturday and then waking up on early on Sunday morning and then going and then going all day on a hot bus with no air conditioning, then going back in the afternoon and getting back about three o'clock and then being back here at five o'clock. That's called charity. Yeah. 
I'll take that type of Christianity over this dead type of Christianity where people come to church and they talk about love all the time. They don't bring one person to church. They don't run, they don't run one bus route. They got everything just right. They don't have to worry about their, about their clothes um, getting messed up because they're not picking up those type of people to bring them to their church. Hey, if you don't want them, we'll take them right here. Patience. What's that word patience mean? Don't change the process. God says now, don't change the process as you continue. But hold on. Then he tells us what we're continuing through. Notice, persecutions, afflictions, evil men attacking us, seducers, being deceived. God, God says, persecution comes. Don't change. Continue the process. When hard times come, trials come, continue. When afflictions get you, continue. You may not feel like it, continue. Get this now. When 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 people leave the church, continue. When people leave a Sunday school class, continue. When people when people go um go compromise, continue. Amen. 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 He says this, when health is afflicted, but continue. When it's 110 outside, but continue. When someone breaks your heart, but continue. When you get spiritually punched in the gut, but continue. When you get the doctor's report and it's not good, but continue. When a loved one falls in sin and breaks your heart, but continue. When you lose a loved one and walk by the casket, but continue. When people malign and attack you, but continue. Don't change who we are. Yeah. Because who we are, there is a recipe God gave us. Amen. One of the reasons why souls are being saved in this church is because we've just taken the recipe that the old timers gave us. And we've just said, we're not, we're, we're not going to try to outsmart the old timers. It worked for them. We think it'll work for us. Amen. And you know what? It is working for us. Yeah. Right. I've been reading a book by a guy by the name of Louis Insminger. Back in 1949, he was talking about Sunday school. This is what I found. We're doing the same thing here he was doing back there. Yeah. I sit there. I read the book. I, I'm, I'm learning some things as I read the book. But I tell you what encourages me the most. What encourages me as I, as I see, I've never met Louis Insminger. I'm not that old. Brother Heidenreich is, but I'm not. And, uh, and, 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 and you have to understand, he, he's, he, he's, I'm reading this and I'm thinking, boy, that's good. Hey, hey, that's what we do. I, I read a little line this week, what he talked about so many. I texted it to some of the men in the church and, and I, I thought, boy, that sounds like something I would say. And you know what else? This is said back in 1949. Isn't it good? Isn't it encouraging that we're still continuing the old time religion just like they did back then? Now, let's not get too smart and say, let's tweak it here. No, just just keep working it. We're living a changing society. But there must be some place that never changes. And it's got to be God's church. The scripture says that the church is the pillar of and ground of what? Truth. So if we change the recipe, we change truth to the world. Now we don't change truth, but we change to the world what they perceive as truth. Let me illustrate. Come here, Brother Hall. I need one other person. Uh, Brother Dion, come on up here. You got the glow of God. We're going to let Brother Diome represent God. He's God. Now, we're going to let Brother Hall 
represent the world. I need one other person. Brother Turk, come on. You look like somebody liberal. Come on. I'm proud to have Brother Trimble up. He's got the colored socks, the other weird socks on. And you get over here a little bit, Brother Brother. Now, let me tell you what's, what's happened. The world, just kind of keep arm's length from him. No, no, not you. You don't worry about him. You keep arm's length from him. The world always says we'll never get too close to the truth. Yeah. Right. Never. Yeah. But you've got a burden to reach the world. And hold on. <laughs> got the right liberal up here, but anyway. So he takes a step towards the world. Just just keep that distance. You don't have to put your arm out. Don't you don't have to. <laughs> I need two other guys up here, but anyway. Just keep the distance, okay? So, so come back over here. So we're, the, we're, 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 we're God wants us to be, old-time religion. And, and so he has that distance. So he said, I want to reach. If we change this a little bit, look, just take a step towards the world. Then I bet we can reach the world. So he takes a step towards the world. Ah. Uh. Yeah, that's right. Man, we haven't reached the world yet. Maybe, maybe if we change a little bit more, maybe we can reach. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah right, right. He's changing for a good reason. He's changing because he wants to reach the world with the gospel. Yep. Yeah. But he says if we change the recipe just a little bit more, maybe we can reach the world. So he changes it a little bit more. Yeah. Hey. And they just he just keeps on going, keeps on going, keeps on going, keeps on going. Stop. <laughs> Then he looks back at me. He says, you're weird. You're the problem with the world. You're the problem why we can't reach the world. You're just too old fashioned. You, 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 if you just come up here, well, let me ask you something. Have you reached the world yet? Now they've got women preachers behind the pulpit up there. Come on now. Now they have sodomites behind the pulpit up there. Somebody help me out. Now they got the rock and roll concerts up there. Somebody help me out. And they say, but, but, but it's good. No, no, no. You're trying to reach the world by being the world. You don't reach the world by being the world. You reach the world by being what Christ wants you to be. And by being this, we can reach those who say, I've seen that. I've had enough of that. I need something changed in my life. They say, so we go. We ain't get this now. So we go. And we go to witness to the lost. We tell them how to be saved. They see the difference. He bows his head and he prays and he receives Christ as Savior and he comes back over here and he says, this is, hey, this is what I want in life because I've seen happiness and I've seen joy there. Brother Dominic, can't we just tweak what we do around here? Can't we just let up just a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Let me help you out. Once you take one step, you are always willing to take more. Call me old fogey. Go ahead. Call me, call me dinosaur. Go ahead. Call me T-Rex Domley. Go ahead. I plan on sticking by that old book right there. Not change. Call me what you want. But I found over here, right here, there's joy. There's no sorrow. It's not easy. Afflictions come. Persecutions come. But I continue. 
And while I continue, I stumble across people who are going through hard times and they say, my life's a wreck. I don't know what's wrong. And I say, I know what's wrong. You need to meet the same one that I met um, over, over, over 50 years ago. I've met him. His name is Jesus Christ. Let me introduce you to him. And I tell him how to get saved. And they meet the same Savior that I've met. And by the way, if you start changing this, one day you will change your gospel. You change your gospel, you'll send people straight to hell. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. It was good for my mama. It was good for my mama. It was good for my mama. It's good enough for me. It was good for my Savior. It was good for my Savior. It was good for my Savior. It's good good enough for me give me that old time religion give me that old time religion give me that old time religion it's good enough for me Amen. I think I'll take Paul's admonition I'm in good company here persecution come affliction I'm in good company here I think I'll just stay right here. Thank you, men. I don't think we have any problems tonight. I just want to remind our church, let's not tweak, let's not change what we are. Let's just continue, despite everyone else around us changing. Continue, Father. Help us tonight to continue. You gave us an admonition from the apostle, some things we ought not to change. We gotta continue. Oh God, tonight, I pray that our church would not, we don't have to be hateful to continue, we just, we just keep doing right. Not change, because that's what you command us to do. Heads are bowed.